Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, ladies! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite, thanks to Tribooth. Don't forget the code TRIPAP200 to get $200 off your Tribooth and Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Just imagine a New Zealander, an American, a Canadian, an Australian, and a half Englishman walk into a podcast. It's just happened. We have, apart from Robert Marshall, we have Rebecca Wilson, we have Ross, and we have Vincent from Source Elements. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. In Argentine, too. Can you talk yeah. from our laughter? Who is oh, yeah. And welcome to the party in Las Vegas, by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, we should say the award-winning team. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a bit yeah, of a party right. going on because there's a new new trophy in the cupboard, by the sounds of things. There is. Best in show. We're holding it up right now. It's brilliant, shining blue, and it uh, says NAB, best in show. And it's going to go in Robert's trophy case. Exactly. Nice. I, don't, I don't have a trophy case, but I have a nice. trophy nice. shelf. Trophy yeah. shelf, yeah. So fill us in. Best in show for? Remote collaboration. Remote production. 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 Re- re- yeah. Remote production, yes. This is the new baby, Source Connect 4, yeah? Yes. Yes. So nice. It does Atmos, amongst other many cool things that Source Connect used to do and more that it does now. So go on, fill us in on the Atmos thing because that's 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 a massive leap forward. Yeah, it uh, allows you to have all sort of the raw Atmos stream, so not just a rendered mix going across uh, a remote connection so someone can listen, but instead it gives you the flexibility to send what's called the bed, then all the objects. These are all separate audio channels, as many as um, it will be, as many as 128. And then um, and the time code, and then most importantly, the metadata that steers all these objects around so that whatever the receiver has, as Atmos does, is it, it just conforms it. It renders it specifically for their speaker setup. So you could have a stage mixing a film with, say, 20 speakers and a director reviewing that mix in real time uh, over Source Connect with, say, 12 speakers or even 10 speakers. And maybe another person's connected at the same time, and they're they just have headphones, so they're getting it as binaural. Yeah, it takes a lot of the thinking out of the equation, right? You just let the renderer on the remote side deal with the translation. So it just lets the the host or the the yeah you know, the mix host, if you will, put one stream up and have it divvy out to everyone accordingly. So everybody's end basically decides what it's what it wants to hear. Exactly. Yeah. Well, right. Well, no, they'll they'll hear the same thing. They'll just experience it in of course. specialization yeah. differently. Yeah. yeah. Right. They'll, they'll, it'll be optimized for their speaker setup because it'll be coming out of a renderer directly on their side. And the specialization would be compatible from what you hear in binaural or five point mm-hmm. one is yeah. what someone's hearing in nine point one point six, but just with that lesser yeah. detail. Yeah. Yeah. The I guess the end goal is sort of like listening parity, which is Im- almost impossible to achieve because everyone's going to have different speakers and configurations. But this is the most optimized yeah. version to get closest to that. It's yeah. not like we're dropping like you know uh, one one of the voice channels, so you only hear one side of the conversation. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the purpose that Atmos was made for, so that there'd be one deliverable, and then whatever your speaker set up. The person with the really nice speaker setup doesn't have to compromise for the person with the really simple speaker setup. And the other way around. And too. the other way around. The other the person with the simple setup is not sort of burdened in a sense by having some something that they can't play because of someone who has a really fancy system. So Atmos is like a deliverable that lets you play back anything from stereo all the way up to you know, huge speakers arrays and 15 and 20 speakers even at home, I think. So- I have kind of an alternate kind of take on this which is basically like a, a bit of a tangent from that t- that angle of it but it's basically like these getting into a really tuned listening environment is a really expensive moment you know you you can only you only get so many hours in there and the ability that now you could be working on a laptop in headphones through the Dolby Atmos renderer 
and building a, a mix towards your big mix session where you're going to actually sit in that room. That's kind of like what I think is at stake. And what's really exciting about this is you could be working on five one before when you were working like in a stereo setting is, is it, you weren't able to know that it was going to translate exactly. This is kind of or even at all. Yeah, you you kind of you yeah. kind of use tools like like I had the the waves thing that lets you take five one and it'd make it yeah. binaural I, I think, and you'd kind of yeah. have an idea. I think most but engineers it, I know would say they do their best work when like the the client leaves and they get to work on something by yeah. themselves in a bit. So <laughs> now the ability that you could be working towards yeah. this grand big spatial mix in a laptop setting and then transmit that to a listening environment that you can get into or or physically get it, there that's the that's the real exciting prospect it kind of feels like equity really yeah. like true equity let's bring it back into um more of the realm of our listeners i guess and ap and i have been having a bit of a play around with source connect 4 thanks very much to you guys um, and the the biggest step forward i see is firstly the gui you know, it looks so much more slick, so much more professional, so much more user-friendly. But in terms of operation-wise, the biggest step forward is the old queue manager, which now becomes restore, replace in Source Connect 4. We were like, you know, we've spent 20 years honing technology, and then we thought now we need to hone the user experience. It's yeah. really an internal the, focus for all of us now. The mm -hmm. queue manager so often was just... People never read the manual. It didn't. It didn't work automatically enough, and then people would just go, "What is this thing? I don't know. Shut it down. Let's get on with our session." It wasn't something that they yeah. thought to ask for because they never had anything like it before. Mm. It's weird. I've done so many sessions where I've said, "Are you using Q Manager?" and I get the answer, "No." What's that? Yeah. We just have one extra step to go, which is to be reading your uh, session file automatically, your Pro Tools or Logic or other session file, whatever we can. And then you honestly wouldn't have to do anything and you've got restore happening all the time without needing to configure anything. For me, the other awesome one would be um, to for it to work even after I've shut down Source Connect because there's so many times that you, you shut it down and you go, oh, I shouldn't have done that, should I? But, you know, well, we uh, have reconnection logic built yeah. in now, or like yeah. a new method where, um, you know, if somebody does shut down, you still got work to do, you can bring it back up and it'll reconnect and it'll restart. But we also, you know, if you shut the program down, then it, it, it can't do it anymore. That's yeah. it's the same. But That's as right. far as like uploading the data, maybe ahead of time yeah. or right away so the, you don't have to wait for the yeah. talent to, or this worry is, if the talent shuts their system so down. This is maybe the most important thing about SourceGate 4. We've redesigned it from scratch, completely rewritten every line of code so that we can add these features that we know everybody wants. So mm. the plan was the very first version on the first day it's pretty much feature to feature with Source Connect 3 because we just need to get it out, right? Others, but yeah. yeah, with Dolby. Yep. And, 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 and the multi yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, all right. Some more extra cool stuff. <laughs> There's <laughs> like, a lot of cool to, stuff. To get you to want to work, great. But then what you're talking about, like, hey, let's upload, you know, the whole session to the cloud so that the engineer can get it later on. All of that stuff can come now because yeah. we've built hooks into all of this technology. Sure. Well, let's let's pick through a few of them. Um, AP and I were talking. We were looking at the um, at that restore replace page. AP noted the recorded files um, area and was wondering if that was sort of a hybrid of the old Source Connect now, where you could actually record directly to the cloud. Is that the case, or is that actually looking at my my well, in my case, my Pro Tools folder, going these are the files you've recorded so far? Exactly. Those are the files that you've recorded in Pro Tools. What I would originally say the queue manager or the auto restore auto replace system recognizes as ones that it knows what they are and who, mm -hmm. who they were connected to. <laughs> and if there's any audio to fix or replace, restore or replace, that it can do it. Yeah. So um, those are your recorded files. And then the other one you might see in there is the uploads, which are files that maybe someone else recorded that you are mm -hmm. uploading data to to either restore someone else's file or replace data in someone else's file. Okay. Because I think, AP, you you sort of liked the idea of, of recording in the cloud, didn't you? Yeah, and that's, and that's like one of those features. In the cloud. Yep. You're technically recording there, and, and we can make that um, recording more available. It's, it's actually... Uh, 
I think Source Connect 3 had that, but it had some flaws to it. But exporting the connection, if it's not there already, will we'll be there. AP's been playing with Twisted Wave too much. That's the problem. <laughs> I've been playing with, yeah, indeed. Uh, just going to ask about port forwarding. Is that, how does that change, or has it changed in uh, Source Connect 4? I got this one. Okay. Uh, how does that change? No more port forwarding is necessary. <laughs> yeah, nice. Basically, Excellent. we, we like find a that. way. We find a way through your connection path and make it work. So you don't have to go into your router and figure out anything complicated. You don't have to call us in a panic because you decided to take a vacation and then you get called for a job. But nothing like that. It's just gonna work. Yeah. So Source Stream is available Perfect. Mac and Windows, and port forwarding, especially in the Pro version, is available if you want to use it. It does kind of. It's the ideal path for the connection if it's available and if you can lay out the red carpet for Source Connect, it appreciates it, but it's no longer required. Only uh, very strict networks and uh, you know exactly corporate environments. Yeah. Right. My question is directed at you, Rebecca. And I'm wondering what hand COVID played in the development of Source Connect 4, the one we're seeing now. You know, it's it's still a complicated thing to to process what happened to the world in 2020. Um, we all changed. Um, it was a one of a major cultural shift for, for our, us as humans. And so, of course, that can only be reflected in technology. And um, the main thing that changed, I would say, for us is that we realized um, we kind of know what we're doing with the internet, which was really nice to find out. It was really, uh, you know, it, it, it well, wasn't we... a pleasant situation at all, but it was nice to know that we were able to help. That was really satisfying if you could have called anything in that situation satisfying. And then it said to us, hey, I think that we have an idea what's going to be needed the next 10, 20 years, um, because we've already been doing it 20 years. Um, you know, Robert and I, we're on the team, we're all young spring chickens. And, <laughs> and I have a cane. Still, you know, still got some ideas <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in there. And yeah. I don't know, maybe just a certain insight that we have from doing this so long. It was like, now the world's ready for us. I, I think what happened in the pandemic is, A, all the doubters went, oh, remote really does work. And for us, what we realize is that remote is no longer just like the talent's remote or the client's remote, but remote is everybody's remote. Yeah. And they all have different roles. Mm -hmm. And how to put those roles together in the most cohesive way became more what Source Connect 4 was about compared to what we thought Source Connect 4 was going to be prior to the pandemic. If you think about Source Connect, like Source Connect was pre-COVID, was something that was nice to have. And then when COVID hit, it was something you had to have. And that changed the whole game, I thought. Well, Andrew, yeah. honestly, you, you and I, you know, we're from the South Pacific, from Australasia. I wouldn't say that Source Connect was a nice to have. It was kind of a, you know, <laughs> whether it was Source Connect or something else, we had to have something or how on earth are we going to work internationally because plane tickets are expensive and, you know. Yeah. That's, I, I think, I think, I think so. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm thinking from my point of view, like a, as a voice talent, working with studios, yeah. like you historically, you just drive it. I'd go to Melbourne or Sydney, wherever it was for a job. And, you know, you manage to convince people that, you know, you can actually connect with to my studio if I work with someone in Sydney or wherever. Um, but it was kind of a luxury, really. And people would just use local talent. Right. Could, pull up in their car park and go into their booth. But once yeah. COVID hit, it was not like that at all. It was a different game. I think especially here in Australia, there was a, a massive resistance to home studios um, to the point where owners of studios would refer would refuse to work with remote voice actors because they figured they were trying to steal their work. So, uh, But COVID sort of put a whole new perspective on that, I guess, really, didn't it? Yeah, and there were people. There were people that were actually literally coming out and black banning talent for having a home setup. Yeah, that guy's got a home studio. He's stealing my work. Prior to, like, up to prior to the pandemic, or did that subside at some point? Yeah, I think it was. Look, it was uh, it was softening, but it was still there. I think what the pandemic did is kind of shift the focus from the studio to the operator. 
to the engineers at those studios, right? So I, I definitely spoke to a lot of people in those places that said they got more work because they were able to do so much of it remotely. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I know mm-hmm. that's a fact for a lot of studios where they were able to like have engineers at home and at the studios, or just because clients weren't in, they were able to do just more work. Like yeah, everybody could be put to work. All you needed was more licenses of whatever it was that you were using, like like Source Pro, Connect, Pro Tools, and Source mm-hmm. Connect and whatnot. Yeah. The irony of this whole thing, when COVID hit, all of a sudden studios were calling me because they had to get out of their commercial studios and set up at home and asking if I could do tests with them to make sure their Source Connect was working. Wow. Right. Or or weren't some talent going to your place just to do sessions because they were, you know, they couldn't go all the way to the studio, but somehow they could give you COVID. (laughs) Exactly. I, I don't know how the rules were, but I, I seem to remember you were hosting some talent at your place. Yeah, there was a few that came here because they they got out of the city and they were living sort of coastal, uh, so they couldn't get in there anyway. And they, um, I was asked if you know people could come here that were living locally, and of course I obliged. The amount of tech that was pushed on to pretty much every operator in a remote setting was is I think probably one of the humbling parts of the pandemic, right? Because you know, it was, it was once you have every role get remote, then all of a sudden, like, I know a lot of audio engineers that know nothing about networks, Yeah, you know, like, it's like literally everyone yeah. is kind of thrown this wrench of technology and different roles. Now I got to be IT as well as engineering. Well, that's what well support as, was here for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just thinking like literally a big part of like Source Connect helping in pandemic was just a huge, heavy load of but I, tech support. And it wasn't just getting talent onboarded. But it was almost teaching a lot of people like how to work remotely or how to like not just do a remote ISDN, like to freaking have everybody be remote and lots do, of and deal with a lot of routing. Yes. So you know, all of that's kind of I, I think that's what's you know, Source Connect Four is represents I think a lot of the learning of that is how to streamline exist make it make the ui make it make sense for you so you don't really need to think too much you know the the getting rid of the i lock and and the port port forwarding requirements i don't know if we talked about i lock oh, yeah, that, that's I that's uh that's the thing you know like we've experienced that right probably in huge volumes right at the start of the pandemic what's right? this the, what is this yeah. i lock oh, thing i need something physical and i can go out and get it and, <laughs> yeah, and you didn't need it physical at the time but it was just a another account is it going to cost me anything no it's a free account and, you know, you can't verify or you can't easily set somebody up because there's just more email verifications for new accounts that are created. And God forbid the account that you created in Source Elements, that same account name is not available in iLock. So now you have two different account names to remember and like... Two different passwords. And yeah, yeah and people are losing their passwords because they use one thing for one account, one thing for another account. So that's gone. No more iLock. Wow. You heard it here first. You heard it here, folks. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> Bravo did say that he would like the UI to be bigger. Bigger? Yeah, smaller. you can't see shit. Smaller. The GUI. Oh, smaller? The GUI. I, I, well, the GUI. I, it would be nice to be able to scale it. I Like, I want to see, I love the size of it as it is for now. But even when you've hit that little four-corner box and it squashes down to the the sort of send and receive meters and then the menu underneath, for me, it still takes up a lot of space on my screen. And you can make it smaller. Yeah, you can. Grab the corner yeah, and push it in. We're in the final mile of quality of life improvements. A lot of the the stuff that you know those sort of smaller bits are just they're going to get done in the next yeah. couple months. Yeah, or I think so. the, and absolutely. I mean, I, you, you've, you've embarked on a massive job, but that was one of the observations that I, I sort of, I did say to Robert is I want to see it big when I'm setting up the session and when I'm getting everybody connected. But once everybody's connected, I, I've got three screens in front of me. I've got my edit on one, my mix on another, and then my third is dedicated to picture for video, you know, source connect, plugins, meters, all the rest of it to keep them out of the way. So so the less space that can take up for me, because I really only need to glance up and see if it's metering if someone says they can't hear something. Can I, hear can something. I throw in a future feature that I don't think is a spoiler because I really want it? Yep. Um we plan to separate the the UI from the engine. 
and you could run it from like another screen or an iPad. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the sweet spot there, especially for, you know, people who are running, you know, big installations, they can walk away and, you know, get you call, oh, Source Connect 5 is not working and they can look on their phone. Oh, yeah. oh, it's working now. Right. Why should they have to go back to the machine sure. room? And what about integration with Nexus? I think you're going to definitely see Nexus and Source Connect integration <laughs> and, and just further integration across the whole product yeah. line yeah going towards that yeah. platform yeah. Kind i think because I, I was telling robert on on a previous episode it wasn't all that long ago i had a session where i had uh, a voice talent up in brisbane somewhere i had a creative sitting in in the airport and two guys in the agency here in sydney and then the client was also online from like perth in western australia or something like that and there was another talent in Adelaide. And it was just this massive session. And if you could have seen my, <laughs> my th poor old thirst screen with meters and everything else going and all the rest of it, it, um, it becomes a logistical nightmare trying to remember where you've put everything and who's on what. So um, combining that all together would be quite impressive. Can't say exactly what you might see, but I, I think Source Connect and um, Nexus or surely more major communication. Work each other. Yeah. Well, that, that's actually yeah. a really good advancement that uh, you've reminded me that you've you've put into four here is the fact that all your connections appear in the one place. I think that's that's amazing in and itself. And they cross connect for you. Yeah. yeah. So, so they all hear each other without you having to do a thing. Right. You you yeah. can right. pull multiple yeah. outputs. Everyone record on everyone on a separate track. And you can even yeah. give them different inputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. If you yeah. right, you, you can send them different things, but they will all send to each other. Yeah. Can I make yeah. it so that person doesn't that's, send to that person? That's the plan for sure. Yeah. 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 We want to have a more project based yeah. style where you could decide. You know, what role is everyone playing? What do they hear? What do you hear? What do you want them you to know? hear? Yeah. Who yeah. hears what? You can make everyone hear each other in a round circle and you could really play the game of like, tell the story to the next person. And when it gets back to you, be like, that is not the story I told. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all, yeah. I mean, the way you've set it up now, it's almost a well and truly upsized Source Connect now, right? I'd agree. In, in a simple sense, it is like Source Connect 3 and, and Source Connect now sort of merging together and becoming, getting each one mm -hmm. giving the best of what they used to do so you get the benefits. Yeah, the, the, the auto restore yeah. replace being like, like now you actually truly have an acquisition system that's like bit accurate, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Never mind the browser, you, you're not gonna get that there, so. We know where every sample and frame is. Speaking of frames. Yeah. yeah. We have a system called the Remote Overdub Sync, which instead of remote transport sync where you are, to deal with latency on a project, if someone is singing or doing ADR, the you know going back to ISDN, the the original method is to send time code into sync to timelines on either side, so one chases the other, and um, you know that works, but there's a lot of setup on either side. So the remote overdub sync idea is that you can send to the talent whatever they you know need to hear and whatever they need to see, and they perform if it's ADR and they sing. And that performance gets back to you and you record it. And while you're recording it using the remote overdub sync system, you hear it in sync. And when you hit stop in your DAW, you see the waveform. And then a moment later, a couple of seconds later, you see that waveform jump back in time to be where it should have been had there been no latency between you. So you can overdub, really just connect and overdub. You don't have to tell people to load up this timeline and click this button to synchronize and... No more comments of that doesn't look right to me from the back of the room when you're recording mm -hmm. with the talent. Exactly. Beautiful. Are you thinking or is, is it going to happen for iOS by any chance? Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm a big iPad fan. I really love mine. I actually use it mostly as a music score player to play yep. the piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I yeah, would love to use Source Connect on it. It's definitely happening. A AP is only asking you because he's trying to create the world's smallest voiceover road kit. It's a purely selfish I motivation. Get it. Okay. I, I get it. He just needs to use a TRRS cable. And, <laughs> and like, if Andrew just needs to talk to me about how to make things, it's like. Uh -huh. Absolutely. You would have the world's smallest road case, indeed. <laughs> that's not the only thing that I've got the smallest of, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> <Jesus>. um, <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Ross. Thank yeah. you, Vincent. And of course, Robert. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Jordan. Well, that was fun. Is it over?
The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribooth. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.